Welcome and thanks for viewing this video. I'd like to give you a brief overview of cancer and then specific details about radiation oncology and how we use radiation therapy to treat disease. Over the years, certain cancers have decreased while others have increased. For some locations, our control rates have increased significantly. We've done really well, while others, the control rates really are unchanged. Cancer starts in a specific organ or tissue. It'll grow locally most often and then spread to other parts of the body. For some cancers, such as breast cancer, lymph nodes may be the early warning sign of spread, while for others, such as prostate cancer, bone metastases is often your first hint of spread. Once you're diagnosed with cancer, you may see many different types of physicians. Surgeons and radiation oncologists, like myself, especially focus on control of the disease locally at the primary site where the cancer started. Others, medical oncologists specifically, focus on both the primary sites of disease and then controlling or preventing the appearance of disease in other parts of the body. Your tumor cells will start from this initial site and then will travel through the bloodstream. Chemotherapy is injected into the bloodstream and then also follows the same pathway, trying to find areas where tumor cells are accumulating or growing and destroy them at that location. Over the years, the therapies have become much more sophisticated as far as chemotherapy, we've had increase in the number of chemotherapies, in the way that they're used, and in the ability to manage side effects. Radiation therapy has become more sophisticated, as has surgery. And further, we are now combining these. Radiation therapy combining with chemotherapy, chemotherapy up front, then surgery, radiation therapy and chemotherapy, and then surgery. There's many different combinations of this and over the years, we have honed this to find the very best chance for cure. Radiation therapy focuses on local control or tumor reduction. Our goal is either curing the disease, getting rid of it, or at least reducing pain or other symptoms you can have. Most patients we treat with external radiation. If you think of a chest x-ray, this is very similar. You have high energy photons that pass through the body when they're doing this, some are absorbed, and uh, this is actually what kills tumor. The amount of radiation is a lot stronger with radiation oncology. It's about 5,000 times more radiation, and the energy is much, much stronger, 100 to 200 times stronger than in a chest X-ray. Well, basically, as this beam of radiation passes through the body, the energy is deposited in the cells, it interacts with the water. Again, we're mostly water. And what this does, it produces a chemical reaction with the water that then produces a hydroxyl radical that damages the DNA. The cancer cells are much less effective at repairing this DNA than normal cells. So they will tend to accumulate DNA damage. And then when they try to reproduce, they die. Or sometimes we produce so much damage, they die immediately. Obviously, radiation therapy can be very dangerous. The treatments have got to be very precisely designed and delivered so that the probability for controlling disease is very high while we're still protecting normal structures as much as possible. We protect normal structures by both shielding them and also allowing time between the individual treatments so that they can recover from damage from the day before. Most treatments will take 10 to 40 treatments total, once a day, taking 10 to 20 minutes per day. Depending upon where we're treating, we may use immobilization devices to help keep you stable during the 10 to 20 minutes of treatment. There are multiple stresses with the diagnosis of cancer. Everything from the initial diagnosis, selecting a treatment, going through the treatment, and then the follow-up phase. How did I do? Will I live? One of the stresses is normal anxiety about radiation therapy. Pretty much everybody's anxious about radiation. Our staff, myself, we recognize this. We've developed a warm and caring environment, but at the same time, it's a very highly technological environment. Texas Oncology is currently the newest center in the central Texas area. The facility design, the state-of-the-art equipment and technology, and the staff combine to produce a positive environment. I don't believe you'll find a better care or have a better personal experience anywhere. External radiation is used to treat tumors that are immediately adjacent to or infiltrating one or more structures. The goal is to control the disease while minimizing the side effects to these adjacent structures. We do this in two ways. One is by extreme precision in radiation delivery. We carefully target the tumor and then shape the beam so that as much normal tissue as possible is excluded. 
The other way uh, we protect normal cells versus tumor cells is through fractionation. Basically, we start off with two cell populations, normal cells, cancer cells. The first day we give radiation, we kill a few normal cells, we kill a few cancer cells, but not many. But we cause a lot of damage that's not fatal. We wait 24 hours, the normal cells repair the damage. The cancer cells repair some of the damage, but not all of it. So the second day, we've got weaker cancer cells. We give radiation the second day, we kill a few normal cells, we kill a lot more cancer cells. We wait 24 hours, the normal cells recover, cancer cells recover, but again, not as much. So the third day, they're even more susceptible to the radiation. We do this on and on and on, letting the normal cells recover while the cancer cells continue to become more and more susceptible to the radiation. Once you or someone decides you need radiation, you call for an appointment. Usually this will take one to two days. If it's an emergency, we can see you the same day. At the initial consultation, you'll meet first with a nurse and then a radiation oncologist. We'll review your disease status, go over the treatment plan with you. We usually work to develop this together. Radiation therapy can start immediately if it's an emergency, but usually it takes one to three days after the consultation before we're able to start. Sometimes for more complex treatments, it may take even longer. The final plan takes into account your disease status, but also your overall health, and then we try to work out what your individual philosophy is toward disease. We want to balance your concerns regarding control of disease against your concern regarding any side effects from the radiotherapy. In each room, we have anatomy text and then monitors. For a lot of patients, we're able to pull up the diagnostic studies and actually look at them. I will teach you how to read CT scans if that's appropriate, so you can actually see what your disease looks like. Texas Oncology uses the very latest technology of CT simulation versus older techniques where you'd have to lay in a table completely immobilized for one to two hours. This is a very rapid process. It takes only 10 to 15 minutes. CT simulation basically involves obtaining CT scans. Now these are individual slices as you pass through this tunnel. Think slices of a loaf of bread. These slices are obtained with you in this treatment position. Then you leave. The individual slices are then sent to me at another computer and we'll reassemble these to produce a virtual patient. Again, think restacking the bread slices to produce the original loaf. We can then determine which direction the radiation will enter the body. Once we have a particular direction determined, we'll then start shaping the radiation from that area. From each direction, we want to target the tumor while sparing the normal structures as much as possible. If we can't achieve a satisfactory arrangement, if either the side effect risk is too high or the tumor control is too low, if we're missing tumor, for example, we can use a much more sophisticated technique called intensity modulated radiotherapy. In this case, we contour all the structures, the tumor, the normal structures, and then we tell the computer, figure out the best treatment. Once we've determined the beam angles and the shape of the beam from each direction, a prescription is written, which is how much radiation we want to give to a particular area. This data is then sent to a dosimetrist. The dosimetrist will take the beam information and the prescription, as well as information about the treatment machine itself, and produce an actual plan which shows us how much radiation is being deposited in each of the structures. This is a very precise process, and the radiation oncologist will review this plan make arrangements to give more radiation here, less radiation here, shape this beam a little bit more until we have a final optimized treatment plan. Texas Oncology Radiation Therapy is a paperless environment. All of our communications are electronic. This reduces the chance for error at any particular stage along this process. Once we've agreed on a plan in dosimetry, the machine parameters are then sent to the treatment machine for treatment delivery. At each treatment, you're precisely aligned with lasers. Prior to the first treatment and often during the individual treatments, we will obtain x-rays each day to ensure very precise alignment. These are reviewed by the radiation oncologist before each treatment is delivered. Although you're in the room by yourself, there will be two video monitors and two audio monitors on you, so you're never really alone. Once your daily treatment is completed, you're discharged to your home. Do you feel radiation therapy when it's being delivered? With rare exception, no. After you've been treated and before your treatment the next day, these targeting x-rays are reviewed and approved to confirm accuracy. Although these are x-rays, they're not diagnostic quality x-rays, so they won't really give us insight into the actual state of your disease. 
Side effects can occur during radiation therapy and often do. It'll depend on the area we're treating, whether you're getting simultaneous chemotherapy, how much radiation we're administering per day, what the total dose is, and just generally what your performance status is. I myself have been writing a manual on managing side effects since 1994, and I'm proud to say it's currently in its ninth edition. I will see you at least once a week to answer any questions and try to keep you on track, and the nurse will go over the potential side effects, answer questions, tell you what we will do to try to keep them from happening, and what we do if they do occur. Our goal is to get you through this as comfortably as possible. Once treatments are completed, you're usually seen at three weeks in a routine follow-up. If you're having some more problems at the end of radiation therapy, I'll see you sooner or more often. Depending upon the disease and how many other physicians you're seeing, this may be the last time I see you, or you may continue follow-up at the radiation center. If our goal is the relief of pain or other symptoms, you usually start to see some benefit by the end of radiotherapy or up to three weeks. Once benefit starts developing, you'll see this continue for anywhere from four to six weeks. If our goal is cure, you'll be followed as you hopefully achieve complete remission, which means no clinical evidence of disease and then you will continue to be followed. Different cancers require that you be in complete remission for different lengths of time before we can use that magic word, cure. We're really proud of our cancer center. It's a combination of technology, facility design, and staff. It produces a very caring and really a curative environment. At Texas Oncology, we recognize that your first chance for cure is the best chance for cure. We want to give you the best chance there is.